Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to profile this Schmincke Neon Limited Edition watercolor set. And this is part of their Academy Aquarelle line, which is more of a student line than their normal Hordam watercolors, which are the professional line. But they've been coming out with some very interesting limited series sets. Uh, I've already swatched the, um, I guess they're pastels. It was a pastel set, I believe. I'll put a link below to the video where I uh, swatched those. And then when I saw this one, I thought, you know, what a what a good time for them to come out with this. Now that I'm trying to play a little bit with fluorescent colors, this might be fun. Um, one thing to note about these, they're calling them neon. They're also they they're also called fluorescents. I think they're essentially the same. Um, but these are not light fast. So you would really only want to use these in a sketchbook or something that's not going to be exposed to light, assuming you don't want them to get faded. So let me go ahead and open this and show you how it comes here. It's these little, oops, having a hard time. Um, it's these little five millimeter tubes here. And what I thought I would do is since I showed this little um, palette insert from Poems About You recently, I figured I would fill this with these colors. So there's five and there's six slots here. So I'm trying to figure out what the sixth color should be in here to accompany these. And <clears throat> one of the colors that I'm thinking of is an indigo, sort of to have a dark um, contrasting color in the palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch these. Well, I'm going to fill this, then I'm going to swatch these once, once this is filled. And then I'm going to do a little bit of mixing with Rembrandt's uh, indigo watercolor and to see if I want to put that in here or if maybe I want to do another color. So I'll probably think on that after the video, but, um, but for now, let's get started with these. Let me find a clean page in my in my watercolor field book from Pentallic. It's this book here that I'm always doing my swatches on. But before we actually get to the swatching, let me go ahead and um, put these in here. And what I wanted to do was show you how I angle watercolors when I put them in little palettes like this. Um, so I generally use a palette knife to get an angle and this is something that I learned from Jane Blundell. So this is not something that I, <laughs> that I came up with, but I do think that it's quite convenient to have things at an angle so that when you come in with your brush, you are not, um, uh, having to stab the watercolor basically, and you can just go in at an angle and get the, uh, color on the side of your brush. It'll become a little bit more clear once I actually do that. So what I'm probably going to do is when I'm filling these, I'm going to flatten them out with this um, palette knife and get them at the right angle. And then I'm going to have some left on my palette knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the watercolor paper and then that will be what I swatch here. That way we can have <clears throat> some efficient use of the extra watercolor and all that will work out. So I think I'm just going to put these in the order in which they are here in the box. Um, so we have neon yellow, neon orange, neon pink, neon blue, and neon green. So let's start with the, actually let me dump those out there. Let's start with the neon yellow. <clears throat> and I got these at uh, St. Louis Art Supply, and St. Louis Art Supply has been carrying a lot of the limited editions. Um, so it's been, when it, oh, see, I'm not, under pressure here. Um, so whenever I've kind of seen a new limited edition come out, I always check there first to see if they have it. And this time they did. I heard about these, I forget where. <laughs> and then I went there and they did indeed have them. So I have not completely filled this palette because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and sort of flatten out that edge here so that it'll dry at an angle and it might fill back in a little bit because this does seem like a pretty um, watery watercolor, but um, you can just kind of flatten it that way. And then I'm going to put, let's put this up here actually so that we can do this simultaneously. So I'm gonna put 
this color and it's and it's going to be way brighter than you're actually seeing here and then i'm going to dip this um, palette knife into my water so that i can fully rinse that off with a paper towel which i'm grabbing for because <laughs> i didn't get that ahead of time okay so now that's all wiped off there um and what i think i will do yeah let's go ahead and swatch that or spread that out a little bit so this is that neon yellow and again it's not coming off on the camera as bright as it is in person it's actually pretty bright so I'm basically just trying to dilute it out there and I'm wondering if you could actually use these kind of like wash and do a thick application because it looks like they are um, almost opaque completely um, without any water on them so that's an idea all right so that's the neon yellow and then as you'll see because I did that little bit of manipulation there with the palette knife it is a little bit at an angle and I can already see that this is flowing a little bit back into the bottom but I think even with that it's still going to be at enough of an angle to help with getting it out with the brush which I'll show you here too so once it's dry in this angle then you can just kind of put your brush in there and you're not scrubbing at all you're not scrubbing the, the pan okay so let's move on and let's go on to the neon yellow and i'm kind of thinking that almost that the, these little pans from poems about you uh that are 3d printed probably would fit like this whole you oh, you'd use almost this whole five milliliter tube in that if you were to fill it all the way this way i might get you know two or three out of that so let's go ahead and do the orange which also leapt out and is super bright so I'm not filling it entirely and then I'm actually I was actually squeezing the tube a little bit on the sides when I was putting the cap on because some of it had gotten in the cap and that got a little bit of it out actually okay so it's there's a little bit in here and I probably put a little bit less than I should have in this one but again I'm just angling this up towards this side <clears throat> and I'm doing that side because I am right-handed so I, I will have the brush in my right hand and I'll be putting the brush in this way so that's why I do that little angle there you can kind of see all right so let's go ahead and wipe that off here another really bright color as these all will be as neon colors and what I plan to do with these is obviously use them in a sketchbook <laughs> um because of their non light fastness quality but um i do want to kind of use them as accents and not necessarily the the big event so i thought it would be nice to have a little palette of just these and one other color so that um you know i can just get these out whenever i really do want to paint with them okay so i'm putting a little bit more on here because we didn't really get a lot out of that um palette knife there pretty bright you're getting a little bit of glare but you'll be you'll be able to see that better when it dries a little bit but let me go ahead and put it to the side here and again these are not showing up as vibrant as they do in person okay so I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the pink assuming all of these have, yeah all of these have kind of leapt out so I'm prepared for that okay so I'm trying to put roughly the same amount in each pan and and here this is what I was doing so I was kind of you can see how it kind of goes up into the tube a little bit because it's like you know pulling the paint back let me go ahead and put these in the little box here okay so one more time I am going to kind of level it off there and then oh I'm actually getting some up on the actual case here but so here you can see they all kind of have that downward angle in each of these pants and I'm actually going to brush some additional in that one up the sides so you can see 
All right, and then I have a little bit of that pink here on my palette knife, and I think that'll be enough to swatch there. Rinsing that off, wiping that off. And, okay, so I put some water on my brush, and then this one's pretty bright as well. I should probably stop saying that. They're all gonna be bright. <laughs> so this is that neon pink. And, um, pretty nice. It's actually a, a really nice neon pink. And then I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to go into these two here on the bottom, and then I'm going to mix a little bit so that I can, with the indigo, to see if I like that as a possible candidate to go in the last compartment here. So this is the neon blue. That didn't come out as much as the others. Okay. So, again, I'm just doing the same thing. And this actually works, I think this is not probably not the best place to do this in this sort of curved um, pans here, but uh, this works really, really well in half pans or full pans. Um, I find that it works a little better in half pans, but um, because you can really get a good angle there. Okay. And I think I'm gonna have to get a little bit more of that out because I didn't really get enough of that on the palette knife. So let's just go ahead and dip into what we just did. And again, you'll see, let me wet my brush a little bit more. So you'll see when I put my brush in there, it kind of matches the angle of how that paint is sitting in there. I put too much on and then I took too much off. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So this one doesn't seem as bright to me as the other colors and seems to have a little bit more binder here. So it has a little bit of a sticky feel. And now that that orange is a little more dry, you can see that. Okay, then here's the last color, which is this neon green. And okay, here we go. And so same deal. I'm just kind of pushing it around into the corners there and then sweeping it up the side. And you could put more in the pan. I'm just putting this amount in there now because I'm, I'm not sure how much I'm going to want to use of this at a time. So let me go ahead and put that down. I think I have enough here too to do the swatch perhaps or perhaps not. <laughs> Let's see. Let me actually get a little bit more. And again, here you see the angle of the brush matches the angle of the paint. And this helps much more when it's dried because um, when the colors are dried, you really kind of have to scrub sometimes to get them to um, get onto your brush. Okay, all right. And then there's that neon green. Okay, so now that we have those, let me tilt this a little so you can see it a little better. So that's the neon yellow, orange, pink, blue, and green. And you probably will see most of this dry before the end of the video here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix each of these colors with this um, Rembrandt Indigo, which I have in this little ceramic palette here. It's already dried on my palette. And I'm gonna mix that with all of these colors to see, to see how I like that as a possible option for this sixth one here. So I'm actually gonna put the indigo down first. I'm gonna mix on the paper. I'm gonna put the indigo down first. And then I'm going to add the fluorescent to that. So let's go ahead and get that yellow. It's pretty wet, so. Oh, that's very interesting. So that neon went in there fairly subtle. It made it a little bit of a teal color here, which you're not really seeing all that well, but once it dries a little bit more, 
You'll be able to see that better. Okay, so that did a little bit of teal. I didn't put a whole lot in there. So let's put some more of this indigo down. And I'm pretty going pretty heavy with this indigo, <laughs> mostly because um, that dried indigo re-wets really well. So it's kind of nice. Okay, I put some extra orange in here. And wow, it almost disappeared in there. Okay, let me, now that it's spread out a little bit, I'm gonna add some more of that and see, see if we can get more of an effect there. Okay. Yeah, interesting that such bright colors would be completely neutralized by, by an indigo. Let me tilt that again. So it did change the quality of the indigo a little. Actually, let me let me put just plain indigo so you'll be able to see that. Because um, you can see it's definitely a little more blue than this one, which has become a little bit more muted. And then this one was a little bit more teal. Okay, so let's move on to the pink. Some more indigo. And then go into the pink. And I'm trying to get a decent amount so that we can see what it looks like. Oh, and here we're getting a pretty deep purple. And at the end of the day, that just turned it into more of a blue or a warm leaning blue, a little warmer than the original. So kind of interesting. And okay, so two more. So let me do the Oof, that was a lot of indigo. Okay, so that's the indigo. And then let me do the blue here. I'm not sure how this will change it, but let's see. Let me add a little more water. So each of them has been changing this indigo a little bit, but in um, sort of unexpected ways. All right, so let's try this last green here. So, oops, my brush was not wet enough. Get more indigo there. And then let's add the green. Yeah, it's so funny. That, that indigo just must be pretty serious. So let me try a little bit more green in this one. Okay, that made a little bit of a difference. Now a little bit more blue to this one. Oh, it's still wet. Yeah. Okay, so now these three are pretty much dry, although this one in the middle is still a little bit wet. One of the other things that I might like to do is, you know, what if I want to do sort of like an abstract galaxy or something like that? So let's see if I put a little bit of yellow of this neon yellow over over the dried so maybe I would get a little bit so just dropping it in like that has kind of a neat effect I'm gonna drop in a little bit of the orange in the next one So it definitely shows up more, obviously, <laughs> when layering as opposed to mixing. And I think that kind of gives a neat effect to have that dark color with the bright color on top. And it's hard to it's hard for you to tell here because it's not exactly how I would do that. And I think the pink probably works best for this. So basically, if I were touching this into something Shows up much better. All right, so these are still a little bit wet, but I'm going to do the same thing here and see how it works when the color is a little bit more wet. Probably get a little bit more dispersion there. Okay. And then same with the green, and then I'm going to be done with this mixing. So, um, so yeah, I think dropping in is probably, if you want the fluorescent qualities to show up a little bit more, is a little bit better than mixing. But these are all mixed with those colors, with the yellow, the orange, the pink, 
the blue and the green neon. And then I've also put some on top here. And this one has actually already blended a little bit and become a little bit more of a brown. So it's lost a little bit of its brightness. Let me add a little bit more here into those. Into that bit of water there. And it looks as like as they're sinking in, they're they're mixing a little bit more. So I'll probably have to play with this a little bit more to see what the best effects would be. Although I do really like this um, indigo here. So I might go ahead and put that in the palette. One other thing I was thinking of was white, but then I didn't know how that would, I mean, it would obviously make these colors a little bit more opaque, but it would also pale them out a little bit. And I didn't really want to do that. This was more what I was thinking of for an accompanying color. Around a little bit so you can see. I actually think the blue on blue looks really neat um, and that was wet when I put it in and these were kind of dry but I put a lot of water um, in with the dropped in color. So so I think you can get some pretty neat effects with that so I'm definitely going to play around and um, I'm going to think about it for a little while but this is definitely a very good candidate. And again, these are mostly dry now. So that's the yellow, orange, pink, blue, green. And this is the Schmincke Special Neon Set. And I'll put a link down below to St. Louis Art Supplies listing of this product, but um, these things sell out really, really quickly. So, um, you know, if you can find it somewhere else, that would be good too. I know a lot of European shops tend to have, sorry, something was falling on my foot there. <laughs> A lot of European shops tend to have these more readily available, the special edition sets. But um, but yeah, that's it for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. And that's all I had for you. Yeah, that's a pretty cool effect with the dropped in. All right. All right. See you next time. Bye.